Hello Edge Yoga School, my name is Ashley Campania of Ashley Campania Yoga and welcome to my restorative yoga class. Um, before we begin, I must say if you are just starting out in yoga, please, please always consult a physician first before you start a new practice of any kind. Um, so for this restorative class, <clears throat> this class specifically is going to be very good for anyone who is pregnant and may have a premature dilate, prematurely dilated cervix. Um, so these will all benefit that issue in pregnancy. What you'll need is one to two straps. If you have yoga straps, that's great. If not, you could find belts or um, scarves. You can tie them in the areas where you'll need to um, make them tighter two to three blankets, depending on how cushiony you want things to be, um, two bolsters to substitute. You could use two to four pillows, depending on how um, squishy they are. And then two blocks. If you have yoga blocks, that's great. If not, you could use stacked up books, um, actually bar, but like weights um, are very heavy. So you can press your uh, feet up against them and they usually stay pretty still. All right, let's begin. So our first pose we're going to take today is Virasana. So you'll take a bolster or pillows and take a seat, and then you're gonna grab one of your straps or belts or scarves and wrap it around just above your knee. You'll pull on the loop to tighten. Not too tight, just a bit taut. And then from here, you're going to extend your legs back and bring your knees to the floor so that your hips are lifted, your legs are on the outsides of your bolster. From here, close your eyes and just let your hands rest in your lap. Start to come into your breath. Let's take a deep inhale, deep exhale out of your mouth. Again, deep inhale and exhale out. Let's transition to Ujjayi Pranayama. Inhale into your nose and exhale through your nose. Start to focus your energy on an intention here. So a positive thought, affirmation, a mantra, or a goal, anything at all just to focus our practice on a one thing. Bring it to the forefront of your mind. Let's take a deep inhale to draw in your intention. Deep exhale out. From here, Parasvatanasana, inhale, reach your hands up to the sky, interlace your hands and send the palms of your hands up. Lengthen your side body here, lift the crown, but press the back of your head to the back of the room. This pose is great for second and third trimesters. For the first trimester, I will give you a modification. So just breathe here, extending your, your hands up, roll your shoulders down your back, and find some length here. Three to five breaths in this pose. And then exhale your hands to heart center. For my first trimester mamas, just a gentle side bend to each side. So place one hand on the floor, or you could use a block to bring the floor up to you. Deep inhale, reach your other arm up and over, and then exhale, start to gently side bend over just until you feel some length in your left side. Inhale, come back up. We'll lift the block to the other side. your other hand on it. Deep inhale, reach up and over. 
Exhale, gentle side bend. And inhale, come back up. We'll take the strap off of our legs, nice and slowly. We move on to our next pose which is tabletop to do some cat cows. So come to your hands and knees. Knees are hip distance, shoulders right over your wrists. On your inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze, cow pose. Exhale, cat, round your spine, tuck your tail, tuck your chin. Press your mat away to dome out your shoulders. And keep going here just to wake up your spine. And give it a little bit of a massage. So this, is, this movement is great for all three trimesters, but I would be careful with it in third trimester to not go too deep into the cow back bend. You're already having a lot of weight pitching forward in the front of your body, so you're gonna have a, a minute back bend while you're in the third trimester. So just be careful. And come less into the back bend, more of just a neutral spine. And then come on down to your mat. We are always also going to utilize the wall as a prop. So this next pose is Dandasana. And we'll take a blanket folded a few times to set under our hips. From there, you have to adjust where your blanket goes. Place your feet up against the wall. And then press your hands down on either side of your hips. So you're using that pressing down to lift and lengthen through the crown of your head. Now, if we had a rope wall in front of us, we could grab two ropes here and use that to help lift our spine and the crown. But for now, we'll use our arms as kind of second and third spines. <laughs> and restorative, just make sure to at least hold each pose for three to five breaths. We usually hold them for three to five minutes. But for this, for time's sake here, we'll use it, we'll use it for three to five minutes or five breaths. <laughs> to come out of it, just gently bend one knee in and then the other to counter the pose. Moving on to our next pose, Maha Mudra. So extend one of your legs back up onto the wall and bend the other leg in to your inner thigh. From here, grab your, one of your straps and wrap it around the arch of your foot. each strap in your hands. Take a deep inhale to lengthen up. And as you exhale, gently walk your hands down, but keep your back straight. You should feel an opening in the back of your leg, your calf and hamstring. And just remember, if you're in your first trimester, you could probably pull yourself all the way down. Second and third trimester, leave room for the belly. So there's not so much pressure on your pelvis, pelvic area. Three to five breaths. And then gently remove the strap from around your foot and switch sides. Other leg comes in. Bend your other leg into your inner thigh. Strap wraps around. And take that big deep inhale to lengthen up. As you exhale, gently walk your hands down. Just to the point where you can make room for your belly and feel the back of your leg open up.
gently release the strap from around your foot. Bend your knees in and make your way up. So next pose we're coming into is Ardha Uttanasana with a wedge. I am gonna use the back of a chair um, today so that I don't have to turn my back to you. So you'll come up to, to standing, place your feet together. You wanna to be at least a leg's length away from the back of your chair. From here, depending on how far along you are in your pregnancy, place your hands on your on the back of the chair or the ledge. Your feet are together, I must note. And then gently exhale, start to lower your forearms onto the back of the surface that you're on. And just let yourself rest for a moment. So in this one, we're taking a concave back and looking forward. should feel an opening through your chest and your arms, creating curvature in your cervical spine. And this is a great pose for baby because it kind of helps them just hang there. <laughs> and this pose is good to do in all three trimesters. to the next pose, which is going to be Ardha or Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. So for this pose, you'll need two blocks. And you'll have to kind of gauge where you put them in relation to the wall. We're going to use the wall as well. We're going to take our hands and turn them out with the thumbs and, and forefingers up against the wall. So to start out, come into tabletop. Have your blocks or whatever you have around the house right by your feet to catch them. Place your hands shoulder width distance and press them up against the wall. On your exhale, gently lift your hips up and let your heels rest on the blocks. Be careful here, you can always keep a bend in your elbows. If you have hyperextension, try to press your chest back a bit and let your head hang loose. This is also a gentle inversion. For this pose, I would avoid in the first trimester, um, but good to do in second and third trimesters. this pose, just gently come to tabletop, walk your hands away, and come to a seat. So this next pose we're going to take is Salamba Shirshasana, uh, but we're going to substitute it, which is headstand, we're going to substitute it with legs up the wall, a more gentle uh, inversion. So for this one we'll need two blankets or you could use a bolster and a blanket. For me, I'm going to use a blanket today. So place your blanket up against a bit of wall. Other blanket will cushion your head. So the best way I've found to get into this pose is to place one of your sides all the way up against the wall and then lie back nice and slowly. Wiggle and waggle your way so that your feet are up the wall. <coughs> From there, place the blanket under your head for support one hand on your heart, one on your belly, or arms to the side. Close your eyes and breathe here, focusing on your breath. This pose is great to do in every trimester. First trimester, you could stay in it for as long as you would like. Second and third, I would, I would not stay in it for more than about 90 seconds to about three minutes. But especially in your third trimester, this helps to take weight out of your off of your feet. There's so much more weight you're carrying in the third in the last trimester. So placing your legs up the wall is a huge, huge relief. 
three to five or 90 seconds to three minutes, depending. And to come out, just gently walk your feet down the wall onto your left side always and curl into a ball. Gently press yourself back up and coming into our next pose, which again is Adho Mukha Svanasana or Down Dog. So place your blocks once again so they can catch your heels. Hands turn out towards using the wall for support. Coming into your tabletop first on your exhale, send your hips up. Oopsies, adjust your blocks where you need to. Let your heels rest, press your chest back. Your thumb and index finger are pressing against the wall. Let your head hang. Three to five breaths here. And then come on down back to your tabletop and out of the pose. For this next pose, we're gonna take Ardha Uttanasana. So come back up again. I will use the back of a chair so I don't have to turn my back to you too much. Feet are together. Place your hands on the back of the chair or the ledge and gently walk your hands so that they're on the forearms, staying in a concave back, looking forward. opening in your chest and your on your biceps creating a bit of weightlessness for your baby to come out gently walk your hands back up walk your feet in coming back into the next pose maha mudra this time i'm going to sit on a bolster bolster using the wall again for support and a strap so place your sit bones on the bolster and extend one of your legs so the sole of your feet is flat on the wall bend your other leg in and wrap the strap around the arch of your foot walk your hands down as you inhale and pull on the strap Extend the crown of your head up. Press your chin back so that your ears align with your shoulder. If you're in your first trimester, you could pull yourself further down over your leg. But try to keep your back straight and just to the point where you feel the back of your leg open up. Gently release, bending your knee in, and switching sides. Extending your other foot to the wall, using the strap, bend your other leg in, deep inhale. Lift up as you exhale, walk your hands down until you feel that really nice opening in your leg. So not painful, intense, but good. Press your ear in line with your shoulder and breathe. pose is great for every trimester. After you're finished, release and set your strap to the side. For our next pose, we're going to we're, we will be taking Ardha Uttanasana once again, this time against a wall and with a block. So I will turn my back to you on this one. The block will go in between your thighs all the way up as high as you can get it and then kind of walk your feet in so your feet Come as close to each other as possible. Turn towards the wall and place your hands on the wall. As you exhale, gently walk your hands back or walk your feet back, walk your hands down until you create an L shape in your body. So you want to keep your ankles right underneath your hips, your ears in line with your biceps. Try to keep your feet as close together as possible so you can squeeze the block. works 
in all trimesters. Breathe here, you'll feel your arms and your chest open even more as you use the wall for support. As you come up, inhale, walk your feet in, walk your hands up, and release the block to the floor. For our second um, Ardha Uttanasana, we'll use the back of the chair. So for this one, place your hands on the chair, feet are together, walk your arms down and extend them out long this time. Ears in line with your biceps and breathe. Three to five breaths. If you're doing a full restorative class, we would hold each pose for three to five minutes. But for time's sake, we're going to use three to five breaths today. To come out, gently inhale and walk your feet in, walk your hands up, come back to your mat. For this next pose, we will take um, an L balance. This is a substitute for a handstand or auto Mukha Vrikshasana. So place two blocks on its highest height, shoulder width distance apart. Come to a standing position, Tadasana. Take a deep inhale, reach up. As you exhale, gentle bend in your knees and place your hands on the blocks so that you can achieve a flat spine. So this mimics our handstand, you're pressing into your blocks. On your inhale, extend your right leg back and float it just to an L. So nothing too high, flex your feet and find some length here. Press back through the sole of your foot and through the crown of your head. So you're mimicking a bit of that weightlessness in your right leg that you get in handstand. Try to square your hips down, keep breathing. On your exhale, release your foot by the other one and just wiggle out your legs. Coming onto the other side, press into your blocks, inhale your left leg up, flex your toes, and find that lovely length side to side again. Crown of the head reaches forward, the foot reaches back. Square your hips. And exhale it down. Inhale to stand up nice and tall and just shake out your legs. we're coming into is Divi Pada Viparita. So for this one, we're going to place two bolsters in line with one another. Grab a blanket. And for this, I like to kind of roll, fold it in half, roll your blanket at about halfway, and then place that at the base of your bolster. So the cushion, it cushions your shoulders and the smaller bit cushions your head. From there, come to a seat, you will grab a strap as well. And place the strap just above your knees. From here, tighten the loop so that you it's taut but not too tight and then slowly lower yourself down onto your bolsters letting your shoulders be cushioned by the blanket hands come out to your sides and allow yourself to breathe coming back into your ujjayi pranayama Allowing your chest to open and just letting go of your legs. Your strap is there to support you. To come out of this pose, just gently roll onto your left side and curl up into a little ball. 
into the fetal position. This helps to counter the back bend. Slowly help yourself up by pressing into your hands and take off your strap. Okay. Our next pose is Salamba Sarvangasana or shoulder stand. So, but we are going to substitute that one today with Vipariti Karani. So for this pose, grab your blanket to cushion your shoulders and head. And we'll also need a chair. So grab your chair, place another blanket on there if you wish to cushion your legs. And then start to lie down on your back resting your legs down, cushioning your upper back and shoulders. And then find your breath again. <clears throat> this pose is great for every um, trimester. However, if you're in your second and especially your third, you may want to elevate your back just a bit by using a bolster or some blocks to create a ramp with your bolster. creates a mimic of that inversion, bringing your heart below your waist. To come out, gently roll onto one side once again, curl up into your fetal position onto the left side, and then make your way up nice and slowly with support. Our next pose we're going to into is Hashimotanasana, and this is a substitution for Halasana, which is this pose here. So for this one, we're going to mimic it by taking a seat. You can sit on a bolster or a blanket. I'm going to sit on a blanket today to cushion your bum, and then grab your strap. So first trimester mommies, you could keep your feet hip distance or even together. Second and third, you want at least one to one and a half feet in between your in between your feet. Or you could even go wider, about the width of your mat. This is to accommodate your belly and to not put too much pressure on your abdomen. From here, grab onto the straps, take a deep inhale. Lengthen your spine upwards. Exhale. See if you can walk your hands down, but keep your back straight. First trimester, you could come all the way down if you want, but just to the point where it feels comfortable. You're feeling the opening in your legs and you're still extending through your spine. And gently release. Bend one knee and then the other. And our next pose we will be taking is Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. So, supported bridge. Again, let's take our bolsters and place them in a line. Bolsters or pillows. Grab a blanket and do that same thing, rolling it up about halfway cushion your shoulders. We'll be adding on with this pose two straps and a block. So the block will go in between your legs. <coughs> Excuse me. One strap all the way up above your knees and pull it tight. Your strap will wrap around your ankles. Pull tight again, not too tight, just taut, <laughs> so that your legs can really relax and they're supported by the bolt, by the belts. Gently walk your hands down, lower down so that your upper body rests on the blanket, 
hands out to your sides and then melt. Completely surrender to this pose, letting your legs go limp, unclenching your hips and your jaw, and releasing tension in your chest and shoulders. this pose just gently roll kind of wiggle and waggle your weight off of your bolsters nice and slowly to the left side curling up into fetal pose press into your hands to rise up and let's remove all the straps and the block coming to our last pose of the day, Shavasana. So for this pose, we're going to use a chair and blankets. So remove your bolsters to the side. And place the chair so that your legs can rest on it. I like to cushion my legs, so I'll place a blanket on the chair seat. Other blanket rests, you can rest your shoulders and your head on. So come up so that your legs come to a 90 degree angle. Gently walk yourself down and rest. So this particular Shavasana, if you wanted to if you are in your third trimester, you may want to use a bolster underneath your back to raise your heart a bit up above your, your waist, just to create, to ease pressure of the fetus on your vena cava. So for this pose, I would say rest anywhere between seven and 10 minutes, maybe longer. When you're ready to move on gently, walk your legs off of the, the chair, roll over to your left side, curl up. Gently make your way to a seat. Sukhasana, hands on your knees, sit up tall. You could place your hips on a blanket or bolster. Inhale, sweep your arms over and exhale them to your heart. Thank you for sharing your inspiring practices, your love, your light. Namaste.